We give God the praise. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The Bible says from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same is his name to be praised. Begin, if you're not already doing it, practicing praising God all day long. When troubles come, praise God. You know, praise is a mighty, mighty weapon. You start praising God in the time of trouble, and Satan will flee from you. The Bible says, resist the devil, and he shall flee from us. God has given us mighty weapons. We are so glad that the Lord loves us so much. He loves you. He will not forsake you. He will never leave you. Thank God for this fellowship. Praise God. Hey, we're in church, y'all. We are in church. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not within the four walls, within the brick and mortar church, but we are in church. The Bible says that wherever two or more of us gather in his name, there he is in the midst of us. And so we thank God. We praise God. We can have church. I mean, we can have church with people in, in Idaho, in Colorado, in California, in Ohio, in Pennsylvania, in New York, in Georgia, in Mississippi. Praise God. And we can have church with people in, in Kenya and in Uganda, Brazil, and, and um, Switzerland and Sweden and so many other countries all at once, wherever two or more gather in the name of Jesus. There he is in the midst of us. I thank God for the online church. You know, you're helping me uh, uh, to, to, to reach out to people all over this nation and in throughout the world. And I pray that you will get the vision and God will use you in a mighty way. Praise God. The online church, it's a pioneer effort. We're, I'm writing a new book entitled The Church, the Online Church and the Great Commission. The Online Church and the Great Commission. My projected date for release of this book is January 2019. And you can be a part of this book if you choose to. I'd like to ask you to email me and send me your testimony, what the online church has done for you. Include in your testimony what you think about the online, ch online church, what it means to you, any testimonies you have, and I'd like, and also give me your, your permission to add that in my book. I'd like to include your testimony in my new book, The, church, the Online Church and the Great Commission. We want to tell people what the online church is doing, and so you can help me to tell that story. As we pioneer, along with Pastor Paul Begley and several others, in reaching beyond the brick and mortar church, beyond the four walls, by using technology, the Internet, the cell phone, and we're reaching people where the brick and mortar church cannot go. And I want to thank you. I, thank, I appreciate you all very much. Uh, Jackie and I, we talk about you all the time. We talk good stuff about you. And we thank God for each and every one of you. And so we're going to get ready uh, to, to uh, hear a message today. And um, before the message, we want to ask Nathan to come on and say hello to us. And then we're going to ask Nathan to lead us in prayer today. Okay, Nathan, if you can hear me and if you can come on and lead us, let me turn my volume up so I can hear you. Hello. Hello. Mike, mute your computer. For some reason, his speaker isn't working on his computer. Okay, so okay. Can use mine. Good. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello, Nathan. Sorry, my computer ain't working for some reason. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the food and drink. Lord, I pray that you watch over us for this online church today. Thank you for everyone that... Thank you for letting everyone to be able to come on today, Lord. And Lord, forgive me for me coming on a little bit early. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Nathan. Thank God for Nathan. Nathan is 12 years old, and God is using him in a mighty way. We thank God for his family, for his mom, Dustina, his father, Mike. We thank God for his sister, Destiny, and his brother, Nikki. This is a family that's uh, sold out for Jesus, and, and God is raising them up, not only individually, but as a family to serve the Lord. And we thank God for this. And what God is doing, let me get my daughter's picture off the, off, off the, um, okay, all right, okay, my family was flashing all over my, my lap, my desktop. We thank God for what he's doing in your lives, and we thank God that you're part of the online church, and until God uh, leads you somewhere else, consider this to be your church where we can fellowship one with another. And I thank God for the opportunity to train many of you, to mentor you, and help all launch you into other ministries. I was just talking with one of our students yesterday. He's 18 years old. And I shared with him, I said, you know, God is using young Nathan. Nathan's 12 years old. Nathan can reach millions of children his age and adults too because of the spirit of the Lord upon Nathan and living in Nathan. I said, now Nathan's 12. He can reach the young people. So I talked to this 18-year-old student in, in the Paul Beckley School of Prophecy, and I said, you know, God can use you to reach that age group that I cannot reach. He said, well, Pastor Carter, you can reach them. I said, no, man, no, man. I said, look here, look, I'm old, man. I'm old as dirt. I'm older than Paul Begley. And, uh, and he said, well, oh, then they might have a problem relating, huh? That's it. Yes, they might have a problem relating. I said, but they can relate to you. I said, now I could get a pair of Nikes or a pair of Air Jordans and, 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 and lace them up, but don't tie them up and, and get some tight pants and walk around looking cool. But that ain't going to help me to relate to anybody. They're going to say, look at that old fool. You know, so 18-year-olds um, can relate to 18-year-olds. 12-year-olds can relate to 12-year-olds. We're all part of the body of Christ. So if God is moving in your heart, if 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 you if you are uh, 40 years old and you're you're divorced, and and God gives you a heart for divorced women, and uh, and you want to minister to divorced women, why not start an online church for divorced women? Why not reach out for divorcees? Why not start an online Bible study? for divorced women to help them to deal with divorce. Or let's say you're 38 years old and you have been abused. Why not start an online church for abused people and, and reach out to them and talk to them, share what's on their hearts and minister God's word? Ladies and gentlemen, the door is open. The window is open. We don't have to just sit up in the brick and mortar church uh, uh, wondering what can be done and, and see and hear, hearing the same old, same old every Sunday and nothing happening and, 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 and seeing people quench the Holy Spirit. Uh, brothers and sisters, there are possibilities God said in his word. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking to prove himself strong on behalf of them whose hearts are perfect towards him. God has a ministry for you. It may be different from anything you have ever seen. Dustina was sharing with me about how her daughter, Destiny, has the gift. She can sing. She can make music. Well, let God use that creative, beautiful voice he's given you and start singing unto the Lord. And you can have an online uh, singing program. You can invite others and, and, and sing unto the Lord with others, with other teenagers. There, is, there are no limitations to what can be done. Well, I'm looking at Ryan, my friend Ryan up in um, Pennsylvania. He and his precious wife Tara and their daughter Jenna. Ryan's a truck driver. And, you know, why not uh, create an online church for truckers where truckers can come together? Breaker, breaker, nine, nine, uh, 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 hey, uh, 
polar bear, teddy bear, a huggy bear, whatever your handle is. Uh, it's, to, it's time to tune in to the Ryan Trogler ministry. And uh, uh, come on, let's tune in with Ryan as Ryan helps us as we go up and down the highways. And Ryan can play some songs and, 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 and share the word of God. And then get uh, truckers, uh, he can be getting testimonies from what's happening in Arizona, what's happening in Oregon, what's happening in Portland, Maine, what's happening in Tallahassee, Florida. There are no limitations as to what we can do if we let the Holy Spirit open us up, open us up. And uh, there are so many things. I mean, I get many, many people coming on the online church, and I get many people coming into the chat room, and I see a lot in the prayer room when Katz sends me Paul Bagley's prayer uh, list. So many are suffering from depression. Well, if you have been delivered from depression, why don't you start an online Bible study for people who, have ex who are experiencing depression? If God has given you the experience and he's brought you through it, then let him use you to help others c to come through. If, if, if you uh, have had, had a history of, uh, of being suicidal and God has delivered you from the spirit of suicide, why can't you open an online church and, and, and have the people who, who are contemplating suicide come in and you pray for them and trust the Holy Spirit to deliver? We're talking about changing people's lives, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking about getting away from the, the, uh, the uh, routines of the church. We're looking at what Jesus wants. And, and I'm, learning, I'm learning more every day, and I want to share this with you, that when I get up for prayer, hey, uh, Nathan, when I get up for prayer, when I go into the presence of the Lord, I'm starting to ask God more and more, Lord, reveal to me what is on your heart. For so long, I've been praying, and like others have been praying, we've been praying what's on our mind. I mean, we just, we go into the prayer room, and we, we just fire it fire our prayers at the Lord. We uh, uh, like a machine gun. We're just telling God, God, I need this. I need a new house. I need a new job. I need healing. I need this. Sometimes I think we ought to just stop and listen. Do like Habakkuk said. Habakkuk said, I will stand upon my guard post. I will situate myself on the ramparts. And I will watch to see what he will say to me. God wants to speak. God has a ministry for you. God's got a plan for you. God did not bring you this far just to drop you and to dump you. God wants you to be able to help him to reach the millions of people who are lost. Eighty percent of people in this nation do not go to church. The percentage is worse in other nations. God wants you. Ladies and gentlemen, this online church is different. We're meeting uh, people who are different. And every one of you who is a student in the Paul Baker School of Prophecy, you know you're different. And God is using you. God is giving you a fresh new anointing because God has something different planned for you. And so seek the Lord. Stay in his presence. Instead of doing all the talking when you pray, quiet yourself down and say, Lord, Reveal to me what's on your heart. What would you like to be done? Tell me, Lord, what are you thinking about? Lord, what would you like to see in the earth? What would you like to see in my life? What you, would you like to see in my neighbors? What would you like to see in our nation? And then when God tells you what is on his heart, when he reveals what's on his heart, then he's just waiting on someone. Listen to this. Listen carefully. God is just waiting on someone to say, Lord, I'll do that for you. He's just waiting on someone to hear what's in his heart and then say, Lord, I'm your person for this. I'm the one. I'm the one you've been waiting for. And, and let God use you. And then when you volunteer, God will pour out his spirit upon you and he will establish you. Nathan, he will establish you. He will help you to reach millions of people 
millions of kids in this land, even adults. Don't limit your ministry to children because you have a, an anointing on you that will touch the hearts of grown-ups. And, and uh, Rachel, Sarah, whatever God lays on your heart, you can do it. Just remember, you're not in this alone. Greater is he in us than he that's in the world. God is waiting. Uh, Waynette, God is waiting on you. He's waiting on you to do what he reveals to you, what he says he wants done, and he's just looking for somebody to stand in the gap. He said in Ezekiel, in Ezekiel, I think it's 29, 22, 30, he says, and I sought for a man among them who would stand in the gap and make up the hedge that I would not destroy the land, and I found none. God is looking for people to stand in the gap in your family, in your neighborhood, in your church, in the online church, in your nation, and in the nations. He's just waiting. And if God, when God finds someone whose heart is teachable, whose spirit is humble, and who is willing to be trained by the Holy Spirit, it does not yet appear what we shall be. This online church that you see uh, Pastor Paul Begley doing, that you see me doing, it was just a dream when I met Pastor Paul Begley four years ago in Jamaica. We talked about this. It was just a dream. And now when we volunteered and let the Holy Spirit know we're available, now not only do we have online churches, but God has me I'm, I'm currently mentoring pastors and helping them to establish online churches. We're not trying to negate the regular church. We're not trying to defeat the regular church. We're not trying to embarrass the regular church. But we know that in most churches, Satan has paralyzed those ministries, and, and now uh, they're more, more bless me parties, or they're fighting against one another, and, and many don't have the vision. But God has given a fresh new vision to, to those who are ready to come out of the box and not be afraid. And so you're one of those, and le that all leads up to my message today, which is entitled, How to Overcome Fear, Part 2. How to Overcome Fear, because God has a calling on you. Ryan, I know God has a calling on you. Roger Pond, God has a calling on you. But you've got to learn how to overcome your fears and get into the face of God and stay in his presence uh, like many are doing and are learning to do, Christy Carpenter up in Idaho, get in God's face and stay in his presence. Stay in his presence for your family. God's got a calling on your family, and stay there until the Lord speaks. And then when the Lord speaks, you begin praying for those whom God has designated for ministry. Because God is looking. He is, his eyes are running to and fro throughout the whole earth right now to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are perfect toward, toward him. And so like Isaiah, just like Isaiah, Isaiah said, Lord, I'll go. God said, who shall I send? Who will go for us? And Isaiah heard God. He saw God according to the sixth chapter. I saw the Lord. He was high and lifted up. I saw him in the year that my cousin King Uzziah died. And he, he, he was high and lifted up. His train filled the temple, and I heard the voice say, Whom shall we send? Who will go for us? God was looking for a man to go into Israel and to preach the gospel. And Isaiah said, Lord, I'll go. And then Isaiah said, But oh, oh God, I'm a sinner. I dwell among people with unclean lips. I'm a sinner. And God cleansed him of his sins and said, Now go. And God is looking for you and me to be just like Isaiah. We don't have the ability to do this, but God gives us the ability. And we're going to look again at the five ways in which Satan tries to get people to not do the will of God. He tries to paralyze you with fear. And, and fear is the opposite of faith. Fear can be uh, uh, described as the absence of faith. 
fear is when faith leaves the scene. And Satan tries to cause fear so that you do not walk in faith. Ladies and gentlemen, most things that Satan has you afraid of will not take place. They will not take place. The devil is a liar. The devil is a punk. The devil is a wimp. The devil cannot cause you to do things that are contrary to God if you trust in the Lord. And so... The devil specializes in lies. Satan is a liar. He's the father of lies. He's the author of lies. He's told a lie to Adam and Eve, and Adam and Eve believed that lie. And for that reason, all mankind has been born in sin and shaped in iniquity. But God sent a deliverer. He sent Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, who was very God. Jesus was in the beginning with God. He is God. He And Jesus said, Father, send me, prepare me a body. I'll go into the earth, and I'll, 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 I'll save them, and I'll even bring the church home singing. And, and, and God uh, prepared Jesus a body, and Jesus, the Scripture says, did not count it robbery to leave heaven and all the glory and power and honor of heaven. Jesus did not consider it robbery to leave heaven and to go into the earth. And so we thank God. We thank God for uh, Jesus. We thank God that God prepared him a body and, and God impregnated the Virgin Mary. Mary had a baby. That baby was uh, the holy child of God. Uh, and, and this child was born and to, to, to live without sin. He was born without sin. He lived without sin. He was tempted just like you and I are tempted. Every temptation you and I have, have met, Jesus met the same thing, yet he did not yield the temptation. He did not sin. The devil could not cause Jesus to sin. And, and so when the devil put Jesus to death, the devil murdered an innocent man. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, the devil murdered an innocent man. The devil had the right. Listen to this. The devil had the right to kill Adam and Eve and all mankind because all mankind was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Listen to this. The devil had the right. He had the legal right, ladies and gentlemen, to kill off all mankind because all mankind had sin in their nature. But when the devil put Jesus to death on the cross, the devil murdered, he murdered, ladies and gentlemen, he murdered an innocent man. He murdered the Lamb of God. He murdered one who was without sin. And for this reason, the devil has to legally, legally pay the price. He must legally pay the price. And the wages of sin is death. And the devil is sentenced to die eternally. To die eternally in a lake of fire. In other words, because he put an innocent man to death, legally, God uh, has brought the devil to court, and the devil has been found guilty of murder, and the devil must suffer the punishment that God puts on him, and God's punishment will be eternal death in the lake of fire. The devil who was once Lucifer, who lived in heaven and led the praise team, the worship team, and the music ministry, and he guarded the very throne of God as Lucifer, the devil, when he rebelled against God, God kicked him out and named him Satan, and God kicked out one-third of the demons from uh, One-third of the angels from heaven, they became the fallen angels. God named them demons. And now they are going throughout the whole world trying to get people to uh, rebel against God and to sin against God. And so, ladies and gentlemen, God has given us authority because Jesus died on the cross. Jesus, uh, who was without sin, died on the cross, and in the spirit realm, Jesus went into hell where Satan's headquarters is, and Jesus took the keys to the kingdom that 
Satan had stolen from Adam, and Jesus took those keys of authority. He put a whooping on the devil. I cannot describe the whooping that Jesus put on the devil. Somebody told me that the devil got beat up so badly, he had one eyeball hanging out of his socket, one shoulder was out of a joint, uh, his nose was broken, his teeth were beaten out. Jesus stomped on his head, crushed his skull, uh, 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 his left leg was limping, and, 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 and his, he was just beaten so badly. Somebody told me that the devil signed himself into hell's hospital. He signed himself into hell's hospital, and then he was trying to recuperate. He was in traction. He was in great pain because Jesus put a whooping on him in hell. Not only did Jesus put a whooping on the devil, but Jesus took the keys of authority back that Satan had stolen from Adam and Eve. And then uh, 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 several days later, several days later, the devil, he was groaning. I mean, the medication wasn't helping him in hell's hospital. He, he was all bruised up, bandaged up. They tried to stick that eyeball back in its socket, and, and, and Satan heard that, that uh, uh, something was happening in an upper room in Jerusalem, and, and uh, the doctors told the devil, don't try to go there. You can't move. It'll be, it'll be, it, it might cause a fatal heart attack if you try to get out and go. And the devil heard something was going on in an upper room in Jerusalem, and so the devil signed himself out of hell's hospital. And he crawled and, and crawled and, and finally made it to Jerusalem and he crawled up the stairs to this upper room and by the time he peeped his one eye, he had one eye he could see through, when he peeped his one eye into the keyhole, whoo! The Holy Ghost fell upon the church. The Holy Ghost fell upon the church. What the devil saw was the Holy Spirit fall upon the 120 believers. He saw the Holy Spirit fall as cloven tongues on the shoulders of the people. And he heard them speaking in tongues and praising God and speaking uh, to God in languages that they did not know. And the power of the Holy Ghost fell upon the church. And the devil said, oh, no. Oh, no, I should never have messed with Jesus. I should never have messed with Jesus. Now the church, the church, they have the same power. They've got the same power that Jesus had when he whooped me, when he put a whipping on me. And somebody told me that the devil had a spiritual heart attack. He had a coronary thrombosis, ladies and gentlemen, and they had to rush him back to a uh, hell's hospital and and the doctors told him we told you not to go but you had to go and the devil said man i'm done i'm through i'm through the church they now have the same power in them that jesus used to whip me and strip me of my kingdom and my power and ladies and gentlemen you need to know that the same power that jesus uh, has belongs to you you have the power you have the authority you have the authority over the devil and the devil has been using hook and crook and lies and deception and intimidation to try to keep you from using the power of God he doesn't want churches to know that the Holy Ghost is available he doesn't want churches uh, to receive the gift of tongues the anointing he doesn't want people going around laying hands on the sick. He doesn't want 12-year-olds getting their own websites and getting their own online Bible study, online churches. He doesn't want 18-year-olds to rise up in faith and start their own online ministries. The devil doesn't want 38-year-old victims of abuse to get an online church and minister in the Holy Ghost to people who are abused. The devil doesn't want divorcees who are 40 years old and have been whipped by divorce to begin ministering to people who are being whipped by divorce. The devil uses deception, and he uses the greatest weapon that he has, ladies and gentlemen, and that's the weapon of fear. Fear. There are five things that the devil uses in his strategy called fear. And he wants you to be so afraid to step out of the box, so afraid to let the Lord use you. And so the devil keeps putting in people's minds. Number one, he says, 
he tells people, you can't. And so people say, I can't. I can't overcome alcoholism. I can't stop committing adultery. I can't stop committing fornication. I can't stop lying. I can't stop cheating on my husband. I can't stop cheating on my wife. I can't stop stealing out of my friend's uh, 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 lockers and out of their desk in school. That's the number one lie that the devil uses. He wants to keep people in fear. He wants them to say, I can't. I can't start an online church. I can't start a ministry. I don't even have a computer. I can't do this. But God says you can. The scripture says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The second thing the devil says, God won't or God will not. He wants you to think God won't back you up. You're just a fool stepping out here. He tried that same thing on Noah. Everybody was laughing at Noah. For almost a 100 years, they laughed at Noah as he built that ark and collected those animals. It took him a long time to build that ark and collect those animals. Even some of Noah's relatives laughed at him, called him a fool. God didn't tell you to do that. Noah, you trip, you be tripping. You lost your mind. It hasn't rained here in 200 years. God won't send any, any rain. It's not going to rain. And they laughed Noah to scorn. And then one day the lightning flashed and the rain started coming. And you know the rest of the story. The devil uses another lie. He says, nobody cares. And so he has people, and I, I, I minister to a lot of them on the online church. I minister to a lot of them uh, 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 when, I, when I enter the, the prayer room with, with, with uh, uh, Paul Begley, Begley Prophecy, when Kat sends me the prayer room. So many people are suffering from depression. So many people are down on themselves. So many people hate themselves. See, the devil has lied to them to the point where they don't even believe in themselves anymore. And nobody cares. I'm the only one left. I'm the only one left in my family. All my family has died. I'm all by myself. Well, if all of your family's died, you're still here. God left you here for a purpose. Nobody cares. Nobody from the church ever visits me. Uh, 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 I don't get any phone calls. And that's called self-pity, ladies and gentlemen. And so self-pity can cause you to waddle in fear. I mean, you'll lay in it like a, a pig. Uh, lays in his slop, and a dog lays and eats his own vomit. And, 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 and there are Christians, ladies and gentlemen, who are waddling in self-pity because nobody cares. And that's a lie straight from the pit of hell. God cares. We care. This church cares. There are many who care. And sometimes when people get to the place where nobody cares, they shut off the help that God sends them. I knew a woman one time, we sent a committee of women to her house, and she pulled the shades. She had her door locked. She turned the lights off. She closed the venetian blinds. She pulled the shades. She didn't want anybody. And so some people, they want to dwell in self-pity, and some people die in self-pity. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to die in self-pity. Every one of us needs to open up and receive the help that God sends us because God cares. How do I know he cares? Because the Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Number four, Satan's fourth lie. I don't matter. I just don't matter to anybody. I'm just a little old nobody. I'm just a lonesome cowboy. I'm just a lonesome cowgirl. My horse won't even let me ride him anymore. I'm just lonesome. I'm just, nobody cares about me. That's a lie. That's a lie. It's a lie straight from hell. You do matter. You do matter. You matter so much to God that he's willing to fill you with his Holy Spirit. He's willing to live inside of you. When you confess Jesus Christ as Lord, the Bible says old things are passed away Behold, all things are become new. 
you say, wow, Pastor Carter, you sure are telling me about myself today. Well, look, I'm telling me about myself too. I can. God will. Somebody cares. God cares. I do matter, and you do matter. And this last thing, this last thing, I hear it so much from so many people. It's too late. Pastor Carter, it's too late for me. It's too late. It's too late. I'm, a, I'm too old. It's too late. Uh, I've done this for so long. Just, just some people just need, just need to shut up. Just close your mouth. Zip your lip. Put a zipper on it. I once went to a hospital. God sent me to a hospital to minister to one of our church members uh, years ago when I pastored in Chester, Pennsylvania. And when I walked in her room, the curtain was drawn around her bed, and I heard her saying on the phone, yes, I'm going to die. I won't be home. I won't be leaving this hospital. And she was talking to her daughter on the phone. She said, and my will is in the top drawer of my dresser, and my jewelry is here, and my, my money's there, and everything, and, 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 and you have power of attorney, and I won't be coming home from the hospital, and this and that. And, and the Lord says, shut her down. And I first I bound I bound the devil. The Bible says, "Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven." I bound that lying spirit. I bound that lying devil in the name of Jesus. And then and then I, I made a noise so she could know I was there. I said, <clears throat> and she looked behind the curtain. She said, "Oh, Pastor Carter's here. I'll call you back, girl." She told her daughter, "I'll call you back, girl." And and so I went over to her bed and greeted her. And uh, she said, how you doing? Oh, I'm not going to make it. And this and that and this and that. And, and the Lord says, shut it down, shut it down. Attack that demon right now. I was not, my bedside manners were not good, ladies and gentlemen. My bedside manners were not good. I said, shut it down. I said, stop the lying. Devil, you're a liar. She looked at me, her eyes got big. I said, yes, devil. You're a liar. The Lord rebuke you. I command that you stop speaking. And then I addressed the lady. I said, God did not say you're going to die. The devil's got you saying you're going to die. And you need to change your testimony. In fact, you're going to be out of this hospital in three days. She looked at me. Her eyes got big. She said, huh? I said, mm -hmm. the Lord said you're going to be out of this hospital in three days. I said, do you believe that? She said, well, I don't know. I said, that's your problem, lady. I'm at my bedside manners were not good. Ladies and gentlemen, there are times when I forget to be mannerly. I said, that's your problem, lady. You don't believe God. You don't trust God. You need to put your trust in God and stop listening to that devil. Devil, the Lord rebuke you. I said, now the Holy Spirit said, you're going to be home in three days. Do you believe it? She said, well, I guess so. I said, don't guess so. Say, yes, I believe. Say it. Say, I believe. She said, I believe. And then the Lord, ladies and gentlemen, the Lord said, lay hands on her. Now, when a man lays a hand, hands on a woman ministering to her, you must be very proper and very careful. So the Lord said, lay your hands on her head in the name of Jesus to be healed. And Dustina, I laid my hands on her head in the name of Jesus, and I said, in the name of Jesus, I command that you be healed. Dustina, this woman felt a jolt. I felt the power of God, the anointing, leave my hands through her head. Her head trembled, her head shook, and then her whole body shook. She was under the covers, but I saw her body straighten up from the top of her head to the bottom of her feet, she became straight like a, a pole, an iron pipe. Whew, her whole body went straight. I thought she was dead. <laughs> and then she let out a huh? she let out a scream. And I knew she was alive. And then she sat up in the bed. She said, Pastor Carter. I said, Give God the glory. Hallelujah. I said, Now you get ready to leave here. In three days, and you're going to be home with your family. And she started praising God, and I said, I'll see you when you get home. And three days later, she was out of the hospital, ladies and gentlemen. She was out of the hospital. But you know one thing? She never came back to church to give her testimony. She never came back to church to give her testimony. 
and I think she died uh, uh, sometime after this. She could still be living today, but she was so uh, uh, so bound up, and she, her family was bound up, and her the best thing she could have gone, done was to come back to church and give her testimony to encourage somebody else. But God healed her, and she she lived for quite a while, a little bit of, a little bit of time, and uh, and it's because. God has the plan. So when the devil says you can't, you say, yes, I can. And you find a scripture to back it up. I can do all things through, through Christ who strengthens me. When the devil says God won't, you say God will. And you find some scripture about God's will for your life. When the devil says nobody cares, you say, oh, yes, God cares. And you quote John 3.16. When the devil says, you don't matter, you say, yes, I do matter. I matter so much to God that he sacrificed his only son for me on the cross. When the devil says, it's too late, you say, oh, no, 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 it's never too late. You quote 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. It is never too late. It wasn't even too late for Nebuchadnezzar after he uh, roamed through the forest like a mad animal, eating grass, eating dirt like an animal with a chain around his neck, with claws on his fingers instead of uh, fingernails and uh, claws on his toes instead of toenails. He lived like an animal. But after seven years, Nebuchadnezzar said, and I, Nebuchadnezzar, looked up. It's in Daniel chapter 4. He said, I, Nebuchadnezzar, looked up, and I lifted up my hands unto the Almighty God. And I stood up like a man. I was no longer an animal. And, and uh, my heart changed back to a human heart. And the claws fell off my body. And the fur fell off my body. And I, Nebuchadnezzar, was restored to my throne. And history, history records, ladies and gentlemen, that, that Nebuchadnezzar lived one year after that experience, and he was able to send letters and couriers to 127 nations that he ruled, and he told them all, worship the God of Daniel. Worship the God Almighty. It's written. It's in history. It's recorded. So it's never too late. You can. Yes, you can. Yes, God will. Yes, somebody cares. God cares. Yes, you do matter. Yes, it's not too late. God wants you to know. He's not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but he's given us the spirit of love and of power, and of a sound mind. Father God, we thank you. We bless you. We praise you. We honor you. You are worthy to be praised. There is none other like you, Lord. There is none other like you, Lord. Unto thee do I lift up my soul. O oh my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. Father God, we pray for Pastor Mark Wolverton, his wife Cindy, whose mother passed away today. We pray for Cindy Wolverton and her family. We pray comfort for this family. We pray, God, for Tammy Nichols, who was online with us last Sunday, and early this week her son passed away. We pray for comfort for Cindy and her family. We pray for the sick and the shut-in. We pray for the people online with us today. Lord, there is nothing impossible for you. And so we commit every care unto you. And most of all, Father, we bind the spirit of fear. We bind the spirit of fear. Spirit of fear, we bind you in the name of Jesus. Based on the shed blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we command that you leave the people and do not come back. We confine you, spirit of fear, to the, the abyss, to the very pit of hell. And God, we release, we release upon your people the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. We release the spirit of power, the spirit of love, and the spirit of a sound mind. For you said in your word, whatsoever we shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever we loose on earth shall be 
loosed in heaven. And so, Father, we loose the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Break every shackle that Satan has put on your people, God. Set every captive free. God, raise up men and women, boys and girls, who will boldly take this gospel forth. Stir up the gifts in your people, Lord God. Stir up the gifts, God. Stir up the gifts in Nathan. Stir up the gifts in Bryce. Stir up the gifts in Waynette. Stir up the gifts in uh, Dustina. Stir up the gifts in Ryan. Stir up the gifts in Tara. Stir up the gifts in Rachel Sarah. Stir up the gifts in Christy. Stir up the gifts in Jeep Girl. Stir up the gifts in all of your people, God. Stir up the gifts. And give new strength to your people. We praise you. We love you. We honor you. We praise you. In Jesus' mighty name, I had a whole list of scriptures I was going to share with you, ladies and gentlemen. I'll just give you a few. But there's a whole list of scriptures that tell us not to fear. Second Timothy 1, 7, for God gave us not, uh, for God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and of love and self-control. Isaiah 41, 10, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. 1 John 4, 18, there is no love, in, there is no fear in love. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment. For fear has to do with punishment. And whoever fears has not been perfected in love. And I love this one. And this is, I, I recommend that you read Psalm 91 every night before you go to bed. Read it out loud. He who dwells in the shelter or the secret place of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he's my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom will I trust? For he will deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover me with his feathers and under his wings I will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. I will not fear the terror by night nor the arrows that fly by day. A thousand shall fall by my side and ten thousand at my right hand, but it shall not come nigh my dwelling. Read Psalm 91 every night. Read it out loud. You chase those demons of fear away. You let the devil know you're resisting him, and it is written, resist the devil, he shall flee from you. The devil hates it when we walk by faith. The devil hates it when we start praising the Lord. The devil hates it when we pray unto God. The devil hates it when we quote the word of God. Jesus defeated the devil with the word of God. The devil tempted Jesus, but Jesus said, it is written. So you let the devil know it is written. Ladies and gentlemen, it's mighty good, mighty good to be on the Lord's side. There is a bomb in Gilead. There is a bomb in Gilead to heal the sin-sick soul. Yes, you can. Yes, God will. Yes, God cares. Yes, you do matter. No. It's not too late. This is Pastor Carter. Mm, I'm enjoying this online church. Hallelujah. I'm enjoying you. I just need to just jump up and shout today. I can shout today and shout praise. Give God some praise. We ought to sing unto the Lord a new song. He has done mighty things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him the victory. God has given you the victory. So walk in victory. Walk in victory, and we praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For those of you who are listening uh, uh, at, uh, on the um, recording and could not make it, could not attend the online church live, there is an, an anointing on this message, and I want to encourage all of you to go back, go to my YouTube channel, and uh, revisit part one of this series um, God has not given us a spirit of fear, how to overcome fear. And look at other messages. These are anointed. And we praise God. 
God bless you. If you have any questions, give me a call. 770-559-9710 or send me an email. Leroy Carter 69 at yahoo.com. I'll be glad to talk with you, chat with you, pray with you. And praise God. We're going to sign off now, but we want you to stay online so we can minister to one another. I want to hear your testimonies. I want to hear what's on your mind. And praise God. And uh, we stop the recording now. God bless you all. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father, for your anointing. We thank you for your love for all of us. We praise you. Thank you for your word. Let your word not return unto you void or empty. Set people free and deliver, Lord. And we'll be careful to give you the praise. In Jesus' name, amen.